Hello, I'm Wayne from Thoughtcast. Thanks for joining us again. And um, we're going to be talking about alloy wheels. Now, alloy wheels are one of the most common mods that we see people doing to their car. The trend is to get the biggest wheel you can, the widest wheel available, and the perception is that that will always improve performance of your car. Um, to most people, a larger wheel looks better. It, it fills the arches, it gives you that nice finished look. But actually, think about the weight of the wheel. If you've ever played with a gyroscope as a child, you realize that when you're holding a spinning wheel, it really resists any change in direction. So if you're adding heavier wheels, you've got four heavier gyroscopes on each corner of your car, and that's more resistance to turning. So if you're not careful, if your wheels are too heavy and too large, you can get tramlining effects it can adversely affect the response, the sharpness of the way the car turns. So you might think you're improving the performance of your car, but in reality, when you've got these expensive wheels and tires on your car, you find that things are worse. Now, changing the size of the wheel will affect the gearing. If your wheel is smaller, it will reduce your top speed, but it will increase your acceleration. And if your wheel is larger, the opposite will happen. So to get round that effect, most people go for a larger alloy wheel with a lower profile tyre. And again, the perception is that those low profile tyres give you much better grip and traction. In reality, they do help with cornering, but they make the car much harsher. And when you're cornering on the limit, it's very unforgiving. A tyre that's got quite a deep profile, you'll get a feel for when it's about to lose traction and brake and slide off. Whereas if you've got a lower profile tyre, you're taken up to the limit much more quickly and that drop off of traction is much more sudden. So if you're not used to a car with low profile tyres, you can be caught out by the handling characteristics that that will introduce. The other problem you've got is curbs. If you've only got a small amount of rubber, most of your alloy wheel is going to be in line with all of the curbs and you're going to get a lot of scratches. It's one of my big pet hates having cars with dents on the alloy wheel. So think about that. Now, I've had an A3 and I've had 19 inch wheels on it and I didn't like that at all. It, it adversely affected the handling. A lot of them come with 18 inch wheels, which is certainly better than the larger wheel. Having had one now with 17 inch wheels, I much prefer the handling. It feels much better. It's more comfortable to drive. I don't feel every single ripple in the road surface anymore. So there's a lot to be said for thinking about the car as a, a package, not just setting it up for a track where you're expecting completely flat surfaces, but thinking about our roads, the potholes, the undulations, the adverse cambers. The tyre has to cope with all of those things. So bear that in mind when you're specifying alloy wheels for your car. And try and look at the weight as well. The weight is probably one of the single biggest things when you're adding a wheel to a car and you can get lighter weight alloy wheels. The only reason I would recommend someone goes out and fits larger wheels is if they want to fit larger brake discs. Smaller wheels will not usually accommodate the larger brake disc sizes, so it makes a lot of sense to increase the size of the alloy wheel if you're going to increase the size of your brakes. Think also about the cooling effect on the brake. The air comes through the alloy into the brake and takes the heat off the brake disc. So depending on the design of the alloy wheel, that can be very efficient or it can be inefficient and almost trap the heat within that wheel well. There's also a perception that wider wheels always give you better grip. If you were under a tire and it was on a piece of glass, you could see the contact patch, which is very tiny in relation to the overall wheel size. So on a narrow wheel, you've got a fairly square contact patch. And on a wider wheel, that tends to be slightly shorter and slightly wider. So you're not actually gaining very much contact patch. And also a wider wheel will trap more water, more snow, more grit under it, and it'll be more prone to aquaplaning than a thinner wheel, which surprises a lot of people. But it's one of those things where if you look at something on paper, it seems to make sense, but then when you put it on your car and take it out into the real world, you hit on all these problems and issues that just didn't come up in theory. And sadly, a lot of people have wasted a lot of money buying a wheel that's inappropriate for their car. It may look good, but actually the performance of the car is degraded. We get a lot of feedback from people who've done this. 
and they've not been happy with the effect they've got from the alloy wheels. They were expecting much higher performance than in reality performance. Great. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us to get out there. See you in the next video.